Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video in some mindset changes and some work that I have to do. Um, and maybe you'll find this insightful into how you've been trading or maybe you won't. Um, I believe that it has been a mistake for me to think that I have to be the bottom or top, top tick to make money. Uh, guys, you really don't. Um, you don't need to be at the bottom or the top tick um, to be profitable. Uh, just catching decent sized moves that are in the middle of the swing, very high probability trades. That's all you need, guys. That's all you need to make a living. That's all you need to be profitable. Um, you don't need to be the bottom or top tick. So let me show you an example. You don't need to be up here at the very top tick short to make money. You really don't. You can wait for the market to, to show you more of what you want uh, and, and let it show you what it's going to do and then take a short there and get covered at the first standard deviation or get covered at uh, the first low. Guys, you don't need to be the top tick. You don't need to be the very bottom tick. Um, and my recommendation to you is that if you want to have staying power and if you want to do this professionally, it's been... <sighs> I realize that I've been... I have been trying to be the top tick. I'm trying, and I think the reason why is that I'm trying to show off to my audience. It's small, but I'm trying to show off. And that's not the right way to think, guys. Um, you don't need to be the bottom or the top tick. You really don't. These, The NASDAQ swings plenty enough for you to make money without ever being the top or the bottom tick. So, for example, we take our bear shorter block there, one standard deviation lower. Guys, these trades are going to hit a lot. When you correctly identify an order block and then you take a one standard deviation move, these things are going to hit a lot. All right, is it going to be is it going to be as exciting for you or is it going to look as good on social media, on YouTube uh, to sh to show it? No, but it's how you make money trading uh, over time is you don't need to be the bottom or the top tick. You don't need to, to make big runners. Um, the market will provide, but you're going to get in trouble like I have if you try to always be at the top or the bottom. Um, it's virtually impossible over time. You sometimes will have good guesses, but to be at the very top or the very bottom of a swing is very difficult, no matter what concepts you're using. However, when you let the market play out, and see what it does and you give it time to work and you see where the swing is going to end and when a new swing to, in the opposite direction is going to begin. If you give it time, guys, if you give it time to work, it will provide. Okay? It will provide. All right? I can show you time and time again where the market uh, makes these one standard deviation moves and <clears throat> guys, it's all you need. It's really all you need. You don't need to be at the bottom or the top tick. You really don't. So if you're like me and you're trying to get a YouTube channel going, you're trying to show off whatever, it encourages you to try and show off, oh, how did he get this amazing entry? Well, because I tried 20 of them. That's why. And I'm not really showing you the 20 times that I lost trying to be the top tick or the bottom tick. And that's a problem, guys. You want to be successful at trading. You want to have staying power. Don't try to, don't try to guess the bottom or the top tick. Um, Wait for the market to give you more information. Wait for that high probability setup that you feel comfortable with, that you know, hey, you know what? I wasn't at the very bottom tick. I missed out on some points, but my probability of this trade working out is significantly higher. And guys, that's really what Michael teaches. And I've been trying to distort his teachings into thinking that it's bottom and top tick. Sometimes you won't take any drawdown on your trades, and sometimes you'll, you'll do well with that. But... It shouldn't be the objective, guys. You don't need to be at the very bottom or at the very top to make an income, to make money. <clears throat> you really don't. Um, wait until the market gives you a clear, high probability setup like an order block, bullish order block, bearish order block, or until it gives you a very clear fair value gap entry or something that you feel <clears throat> is very, you know, it's a very high probability trade. Wait for that. Wait for that, guys, and don't get greedy. Don't get greedy. Be thankful that you got your 10 points or your 20 points. Okay, so that has been a mistake in my thinking um, and also trying to play these economic calendar events, trying to be right there when the decision comes out is, is a mistake as well. 
Um, I would say even trading the open is, is oftentimes going to be too much, guys. Wait until the New York Open is five, ten minutes in, and then start trading, okay? Wait until the open is in and then see where the market wants to go from there. You will find overall that if you're not trying to be the bottom and top tick, if you are not trying to be at the very top and bottom, if you are not playing New York Open, you're waiting for the open first, say, 10 to 15 minutes to come in. If you're not playing right when the economic releases are coming out, if you're waiting for those to play out as well, if it's a day that has an economic release, you're going to find that your strike rate, the amount of times that your trades are successful, if you're aiming for your low-hanging fruit, your one measured move, you know, the nearest high, the nearest low, the nearest inefficiency, and not even a full redelivery of it, just the top side of the nearest inefficiency. You're, you're going to find that your success rate is going to go up massively. You're not in the market when that initial volatility is coming in. You're not in the market when the economic calendar releases are coming in. And you are not trying to be the bottom or the top tick. You can use a turtle soup pattern to describe what the market has done, but you yourself don't need to trade turtle soups in order to be profitable. I assure you that you don't. Okay, so wait for those high probability setups. Wait for that initial volatility of the open to come in. Um, <clears throat> you know, that, that, and don't try to, guys, no more turtle soups for me. I'm, I'm not trying to pretend I, I know which one of these highs is going to reject or which one of the lows is going to reject. And I know that these things swing enough. Even if it's a 10-point swing, guys, that's enough. And the NASDAQ is regularly swinging 40, 50, 100 points. I promise you it swings enough. You don't need to be at the very bottom or the top. You don't need to be in when the economic calendar is, is going to have a release. And you really don't even need to be in on New York Open. I promise you, you don't. Uh, you can make more than enough money waiting for those things to pass and waiting for a high probability setup. So with that, guys, that's my very quick and brief message, a mistake in my mindset that I know that I've made. I've, I've, even though I, I believe that I'm making progress and not gambling and trying to be more responsible, I know that I'm not there yet, and I know that a big issue of mine and mindset is I've been trying to hit these limit orders and trying to hit these turtle soup patterns, guys. It's not good trading. It's really not professional trading. You've You've got to wait until the market gives you a clear signal and then you aim for your low-hanging fruit and then your strike rate can be 80, 90%. I promise you it can. It can be a very high strike rate when you're not trying to be the top tick, you're not trying to be the bottom tick, and you're aiming for reasonable one measured move, the nearest high or low, the nearest inefficiency. Guys, you can get your strike rate very high. Okay? You can get it very high. And then let the gamblers gamble. When the when the New York Stock Exchange opens, let the gamblers gamble. And when the economic calendar has a release, let the gamblers play the casino, guys. You want to be a professional, let the gamblers try and pick the top and the bottom tick. Okay? You want to be a professional, you wait. You wait until you get that high probability set up that you know has a very high likelihood of working. Could be a bullish order block, bearish order block, fair value gap, whatever. You don't need to be at the very bottom, though, guys. And you don't need to be at the very top. I promise you, you don't. And that's a message to me. That's a message to you. You don't need to be in when the economic calendar is making a release. You don't need to be in on New York Open. You really don't. And um, that's it, guys. God bless. Good luck.